Right, good evening, um, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, the Cagney Understanding um, of Airspace Above Your Home and the Future of Airspace. We are Cagney, uh, Communities Against Gatwick Noise Emissions. We are your umbrella um, aviation and community and environment group for Sussex, Surrey and Kent. And I am uh, fortunate enough to be chair. I'm Sally Pavey. Cagney started in February 2014 and we have grown considerably um, to have over 5,000 members now. Um, and if you would like to join our mailing list, please do so via www.cagney.org um, and we will keep you updated on airspace changes and environmental things that are taking place around Gatwick Airport and in aviation worldwide. Um, and on the environment, we only really deal with um, anything to do with aviation, but that does include um, surface access, housing, etc. the ramifications of, of airports. Um, if I don't cover anything this evening, um, I apologise. We can do more of these sessions um, if we hear from you that are more in depth um, and more complex, especially as Gatwick push forward with the modernization of airspace. Um, so uh, please let us know, and obviously um, the rebuilding of the emergency runway as a second runway. And I'll touch on, on those two things this evening. Um, this presentation is going back to um, basics. So apologies if you already know some things, but it'll be in two halves. It'll be now and the future. If you don't understand anything or you have a question whilst the presentation is taking place, please put them in the chat. Um, and we will come to those in the question and answer session at the end of the presentation. I would love to see you then, and I'd love to talk to you then, so um, we can all, and we won't be recording that part of this this evening. Um, so if I move on to um, slide number two, this is how Gatwick used to look. Um, Gatwick started its life in 1930 as a small flying club. Um, it was exclusively for flying enthusiasts. It had a grass uh, runway. In 1958, the new Gatwick was opened by the Queen. In 1963, the Ministry for Aviation um, transferred all uh, regular chartered flights to from Heathrow to Gatwick, and in 1964, um, extended its runway um, to, to what we see today. Pre-COVID, um, Gatwick had roughly 58 airlines flying to 228 destinations carrying 46 million passengers. 89% uh, is European uh, business. So here, this map shows you the current airspace around Gatwick and at Gatwick. Now this is obviously pre-COVID. Gatwick Airport is party to one of the busiest airspaces in the Southeast. It sits under Heathrow and much of its airspace is um, dictated to by this larger airport. It also affected by um, other airspace above 7,000 feet, as it shows here. Um, you have Gatwick sitting here. This is the runway here. This is to the east. This is to the west. We have Heathrow to the west of us, Luton directly above us, and Stansted to, um, to the right, to the east side of Gatwick Airport. Now, this is just showing you some of the complexity of, of aviation. Um, the aviation is full of abbreviations and complex procedures, but even the bodies that seek to deal with airspace and airports is full of abbreviations. Um, so here we've got some examples for you. Um, I'm sure you've started reading them. So you have Gatwick Airport Consultative Committee, they're known as GATCOM. Um, that's made up of um, government bodies, air traffic control, Gatwick Airport, local authorities, um, business groups, and um, one um, representative of the environment. Then you have NATMAG that says what it, what it says there, it tracks noise and monitors advisory group. Uh, noise management board, that is meant to be the forum that communities have a voice through. Next, which is the noise executive board. NCF, which is Noise Community Forum, 
Uh, you then have 106 agreements, which is, is financial um, assistance to local authorities. It's an agreement between the airport and local authorities um, of how much money Gatwick is going to, to pay towards um, the, the uses of the surface access, so that's roads. Uh, and then you have the industry groups, so aviation industry groups. So you have um, Flopsy, um, SA, which is Sustainable Aviation. Um, you then have DFT, so that's the Department for Transport, and their body is AMAC. Um, and then obviously you have ANEG. <laughs> um, as you can see, it's, it's quite complex. No wonder it's quite confusing. So this gives you an idea of the levels of aircraft overland, mostly arrivals. Um, because obviously departures are climbing, but this just gives you an idea. Now, air traffic control, NATS, um, they control the airspace around Gatwick Airport and for most of the UK airports, but Gatwick itself controls up to 4,000 feet um, through their, their, their tower. ATMs, air traffic movements. So um, pre-COVID, it was about 56 an hour. Um, there is no limit to the number of flights per day or per hour at Gatwick. The only limit is the number of planes that can safely operate um, through air traffic control with the one runway. At night, there are restrictions in place upon Gatwick. The night period is 11.30 p.m. till 6 a.m. And there's shoulder periods either side of these times. And that's where you'll see lots of aircraft trying to be crammed in so that they don't go into the night quota. In the winter schedule, Gatwick is allowed to fly 3,250 flights a night. In the summer, the schedule is 11,200 aircraft movements, and that's permitted by the DFT, the Department for Transport. Now, the, the DFT are due to consult yet again. We've had two airspace consultations on night flights to date. Um, so we, we are expecting another consultation next year. But there are no restrictions to what time the aircraft fly at night and if they are arrivals or departures. So it is very much according to um, the schedules of the airlines that dictates this. Other airports have different night procedures. And I'm just going to pause here because you've obviously, well, you might have heard that the government is looking to relax restrictions on night flights. Uh, currently, Heathrow has a gentleman's agreement of no night flights. Um, as I say, Stansted has a different agreement to Gatwick because Stansted has a lot of freight coming in at night. Gatwick, uh, as I say, has 11,200 and we're in the summer schedule now. For them to have dispensations, obviously that would cause a lot of anger to those people that are impacted by um, aircraft during the night. Um, so we have we've we've strongly opposed this, um, and there is there is real scientific uh, reports on the impact on health of night flights. Um, so um, that's something to also the uh, government should be considering at this point. This gives you an idea of the terrain around Gatwick, and they do take that into consideration. Um, so Gatwick sits about two hundred feet above sea level. Um, and to give you an idea of places, this is Rusper over here. I think they're about 400 feet above sea level. You've got Charwood over here, Smallfield over here, Lingfield over here. So it gives you an idea. The darker green um, is, 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 it just gives you an idea of the terrain. So that is something that's taken into consideration when um, you see um, aircraft heights. If you ever complain about aircraft planes or anything and they give you the height of it, it will be above sea level. Okay, so Gatwick has noise monitors, and these are located after consultation through um, another abbreviation. So it's Gatwick Noise Monitoring Group and NATMAG. Both these groups decide where Gatwick um, places these noise monitors around the airport, because um, there's many communities that, that, that request them. And this is how they monitor the noise impact. Um, and sound is measured in decibels. Um, we also, um, they also now accept, but they don't have to include noise events. So during um, the, the day, it's a 65 decibel noise event, and at night, it's a 45 um, decibel. 
So you'll see N65 and N45. Um, most of the time they use something called LEQ. Um, that's an average. So they take an average of the noise. So it's equivalent sound level of aircraft noise in decibels, often called equivalent continuous sound levels. Um, so that's just to give you an idea. Um, if you do have issues with aircraft, please do complain to the online process. Um, the, the link is there. Um, but you can also phone, there is a phone line as well. But if you don't complain, and it is quite tedious doing a complaint per aircraft that disturbs you, Gatwick then can't, we can't monitor what is upset in the communities. So it's really important. And this is how Gatwick is judged by the Department for Transport and the CAA um, is one of the things they take into consideration um, when they're looking at noise at, at Gatwick Airport. Now the CAA, the Civil Aviation Authority, they um, monitor um, and they approve airspace changes. Um, they are also someone, a body that you would go to if you had a problem with a flight. So they, they, they assist the consumer as well. Um, and they put restrictions, they put guidance in, but it's all according to policy. So they basically implement policy. So here you'll see um, noise counters. Now this is done by the Environment Research and Consultation Department, um, and it's based on ANCON, which is noise contours, are based in the UK Civil Aircraft Noise Contour Model. These are noise contours, and they move subject to whether we've got arrivals coming in here to the, to the east, or whether we've got departures going out to the west. So they do shift a little bit. And if I can give you an idea of, of some places, so Capel there, um, Rohook, Rudwick down here. Um, in here is um, Three Bridges, Pound Hill, Ifield, Lambs Green. Up here, we've got Hookwood, Orley. Um, over here, you've got Smallfield, Lingfield, Dorman's Land. Um, and, and obviously, you know, the aircraft fly outside of these noise contours, but this gives you an idea of what Gatwick judge. Now, this is a summer day. Um, so it gives you an idea, that's 54, that's 57, that's 60, 63. Um, they are the contours that are judged on an average, an average of noise. And you tend to get, um, a sort of 70 30 split. Um, and so you'll have 70% of departures heading to the west, 30% um, of departures going to the east. And then, oh, sorry. And then you'll have um, vice versa. So you'll have arrivals coming in here, say 70% of the time, and you'll have, um, uh, sorry, yes, and you'll have. Um, Departure seventy percent of the time going this way and arrivals coming in this way, so it's it's not a true it, what, what I'm trying to say it's not a true split. So so seventy percent of departures were going this way doesn't mean to say that you're only getting thirty percent of arrivals. You're not. Um, you're getting seventy percent of the arrivals. It's when um, you get a thirty percent arrivals this end, you don't get this. We don't get the same amount of departures. Um, because obviously most of the time departures are going to the west and arrivals are coming into the east. So that's the predominant way. And, and that's done on, on wind. Now I'm showing you 2019 for the simple reason that this is, this is the baseline that Gamak is using um, with their current um, consultation on um, rebuilding the emergency runway as a second runway. So I'm using that um, contour lines as a base um, but interesting, this was 2019 was when Gatwick got the most complaints as well. Um, now, if I flick forward, you'll see there's another noise contour. And I'm going to flick through quite a few of these just to give you an idea, but to let you know that the average summer is a 16 hour day and the night is, is an average eight hour LEQ noise exposure contour.
the quieter planes flown at Gatwick um, now are Airbus A320neos um, or, and the A321neo. Um, and, and, and Gatwick has uh, reduced the noise of planes. Um, these NEOs are three to five decibels quieter. But we're seeing, you know, we will see the Boeing 738 MAX coming back. We will, we have before COVID, we had the Emirates A380, um, as well as older planes. We have older planes that fly in and out of Gatwick Airport as well. Now these noise contours complement uh, the noise event figures, as I said to you, um, at night it's N45, during the day it's N65, and that's noise events. So again, let me give you um, some landmarks, if my computer, there we go, Hawley, Charwood, Ockley, um, Rusper here. Uh, yeah, who's that? Dormer's Lander, Lingfield, Edinburgh, just to give you an idea. I appreciate that the arrivals and departures go further out, but this gives you an idea of how narrow these noise contours are, and that is how noise is monitored at Gatwick Airport. Um, we are recording this, this first part of the presentation, so if you um, perhaps want to turn your screens off and uh, silence your mics, um, that would be really um, helpful, thank you, until we get to the questions and answers. If you've got any questions, please pop them in the chat as I go through the presentation and, and we, we can discuss them at, at the end. Um, so here, just to go on, these are departure routes. Um, now they're very much dictated by the wind and mostly we have a westerly wind at Gatwick. So here, this is Gatwick Airport here. These single lines are what we are now referring to as concentrated flight paths. These were introduced in 2014. Um, Gatwick went through a process of consultation. At the time, the Civil Aviation Authority, the CAA, used a consultation process called um, uh, CAP 725. That was found um, not fit for purpose, and they then replaced it with a seven stage process called um, CAP 1616. And it's basically a consultation for a full airspace change. So these are concentrated departure routes. Um, so here, this is the west of Gatwick Airport. So here you have route four, um, here you have route one, here you have route seven and eight. They used to be called Bogner, Lamp, Sam. So you might hear them refer to that. This is Wizard, now route nine. This route is, is not really permitted to be flown um, because it goes over densely populated uh, residents. To the east, we have departures here. This is route two. This gets fixed down um, until it gets all the way down to Lewis because you've got arrival traffic coming over here. Uh, route five, this can climb because it's not restricted by Heathrow. So can route six. Route three can't climb because it comes over. And in actual fact, if it can, it will dip down here because it's going to Europe. It tends to go down this way. Um, because here we have Heathrow traffic. And when the airspace at City Airport was changed back in 2014, they um, introduced point merge on arrivals. Um, they took a lot of the arrival traffic from the east and now bring it down the west side. So you get a lot of flights from Dublin coming in this way, arrivals coming down here and round to the east over here. Um, Route four had a lot of controversy um, but I'll come on to that. Um, so just to let you know, if I'm talking arrivals in the east, they're called westerlies. And if I'm talking about arrivals in the west, they're called easterlies, just to confuse you. <laughs> um, so let me, let me move on a, a, a slide. That's, that's again, oh, okay. So this is just showing you that subject to whether it's arrivals or departures, each runway has a different name. So sometimes you'll see runway 26L and sometimes you'll see runway 08 right. It's subject to whether they're departures or arrivals. So if it's departures on the east side, it's 08. If it's departures on the west side, it's 26L, left and right. 
So this is what this is what we have had um, since um, 1960s. These are called noise preferential routes on departures. This is Gatwick Airport here. So you can see they're quite big corridors. So this is how planes used to fly and they used to have ground beacons to guide the planes. And it was very much the pilot turning the plane, um, but they tended to stay more or less within the noise preferential routes, but they could fly anywhere within that noise preferential route. So you might get one here, you might get one there, you might get one there, you might get one here. So they were dispersed. So that's what we, we, we know as, as dispersal. Uh, both be so that's what we know as, as, as dispersal. Now, if I just flick back to the previous slide, spot the difference. These are concentrated routes. And what the civil aviation told Gatwick to do was to put the concentrated route down the middle of the noise preferential route. So right down the middle. Now, each noise preferential route has a, has, um, a limit, so three to 4,000 feet. After that, they can vector outside of the noise preferential route, but more or less planes would fly down here and then you might see them vector here. So um, you, you'll see sort of more spaghetti. Whereas now, let me flick back, you'll see this. These are concentrated routes, they're called precision based navigation and this is like sat nav for planes so you, you've gone from that to that so with that you might have got if you live to say here you might have got one plane an hour you might have felt the plane here the next hour and there might have been one over there now if you live in the middle of that noise preferential route sorry wrong way if you're in the middle of that noise preferential route you get all the planes down the middle of this noise preferential route. And with route four, the problem was, was they were flying, when they introduced um, PRNAV, so that's precision based navigation, so PBN, performance based navigation, they um, were going outside of this noise preferential route. And so people that have never been overflown by departures were getting flown over. And so, um, oh, and so legal action was taken um, by somebody who lived up here and uh, Gatwick and the CA were found at fault and they were told to um, put the route back to more or less where it was. Um, but all the legal action did was make Gatwick go through the process again. It, it didn't really change the facts of life. The performance-based navigation is aviation and the government's opinion of the future of aviation. Um, and so Gamaca now going through uh, a CAP 1616, so that's a seven stage airspace change on this route. So the legal action just made them go back and do it all again. Um, so um, uh, the legal action was a judicial review, so a JR. Um, and so Gatwick, that is what Gatwick currently is doing. I mean, the problem Gatwick's having is that it's, they're finding it very hard to keep within the noise preferential route, but also obviously people um, are not happy at this one concentrated route, they want dispersal. Um, and so um, I think the majority of people would like to see dispersal on departures, um, but that's how we are um, currently. So sat nav for planes. Think of um, your five fingers and then narrow them down to, to one line. And that will sort of give you an idea of what changed. So here we have again departures with their with their sort of their old names, Bobner. Um, and that just gives you an idea. So that was introduced in 2014. And the CA not only guide um, and set the criteria for consultations on airspace change. They also judge the results. So something called a PIR review is conducted and they will decide if it's been, if the consultation has been conducted correctly, um, basically ticked all seven boxes. Um, if you wanted to then challenge it, you would have to get 10,000 um, residents to object. And then the Secretary of State would have, would, would actually call it in and have a final say over it. Um, 
Something else that happened in 2014 was Gatwick did a trial of ADNED. It was a departure route that flew over new areas. And um, if you can see here, this is route one. And you'll see we've, we've, we've no longer got route seven and eight coming down here. This blue is the noise preferential routes. So they, they flew a trial, which was ADNED. And that departure route was um, to trial a, a 20 degree separation between these two departure routes. They didn't do any environmental impact research at all when they conducted that. Um, ADNID then became um, an indicative route of the uh, second runway. Um, we now call it the third runway um, because it is the third runway <laughs> at the moment. Um, so, that caused a lot of anger and that it was how Cagney was formed. Communities came together and said, we've got to do something about this. Um, because at that time, the CAA, the DFT and Gatwick Airport wouldn't communicate at all. These red lines you're seeing, these are arrivals going down to the holding stack. So you can see how busy it is. But you can see how concentrated these routes are. And as I said previously, when planes get to sort of three, 4,000 feet, subject to the noise preferential route, the NPR, they can vector. So they can say to air traffic control, please give me a more direct route to say Dublin or wherever their, their end destination is. So um, the other thing that happened in 2014 was something called LAMP. Um, the London Airspace Management Programme. Um, and again, Gatwick sought to change arrivals um, and it looked for ADNID in as three, three, three options. Um, and again, that received a lot of anger. In actual fact, LAMP um, consultation, it was stopped um, due to, to the anger it caused. Right, arrivals, I'm sure quite a few people um, want to hear about arrivals. Now, um, arrivals did change, but they didn't change like departures. Um, arrivals changed in that um, here is an arrival swathe. The, the, the darker the colour, so the redder the colour, the more intense the number of planes that are flying in that area. So as I said to you, this is um, to the west, but they're called easterlies, and this is to the east, but they're called westerlies. This is the final approach, which is known as the instrument landing system. That's a beacon that comes out from the runway and planes latch onto that beacon and it guides them in. That's how they can land in fog and, and high winds, etc. cetera. Um, so here you have, um, say, 10 nautical mile joined to the, to, the, to the final approach, you have 12, 14 and so on, and then you have directly in. Remember Heathrow's over here and you've got the Midhurst gate, so it restricts um, a lot of the traffic to the west of the airport. And again, here in the east, um, you've got 10, 12, 14, um, and then you've got directly in. Um, most of them come from the holding stacks, which are down here or most of them come from European destinations. So most of them are coming in down here. But like if you've got Amsterdam, they will tend to come directly across to join the swathe. Um, go arounds are caused mostly because um, the runway is occupied or the planes are coming in too fast and they've got to do a go around because they're, they're too fast to touch down. Um, a lot of foreign pilots don't know the airport at Gatwick. And so they actually have to be led off the runway um, by wagon saying follow me so that's that's some of the reasons obviously weather can be a cause as well um, for go arounds um, but yeah that's that's another reason um, so what changed with arrivals well um, NATS air traffic control changed the the join during the day for arrivals is eight nautical miles oh last time eight nautical miles um, and NATS wanted to bring planes in quieter and slower and wanted to reduce the go arounds and they wanted to take the speed off gradually. So pilots had more distance to go. So they had more time to get the flight uh, deck in order before landing. So they moved the join from eight nautical miles to uh, 10 nautical miles. This narrowed the swathe in both the east and the west. 
um, and it caused a lot of noise groups to be formed, um, particularly in Kent. Um, I think there's like four noise groups, um, all in Penshurst and Langton Green. Um, so they took legal action um, against the CAA and the CAA were found not to have done a consultation. And so Gatwick did something called the arrival review. Uh, let's move on. Uh, so yeah, so they did an arrival review and the arrival review eventually found um, that, the, that the arrivals had to be moved back to eight nautical miles. So during the day it was moved back to eight nautical miles and that's what we have today. Um, arrivals come in at 8, 10, 12, 14 directly in, both to the east and the west. Now here you can see we've got the holding stacks. So this is going to the west, so these are easterly arrivals. These are holding stacks, so willow and timber. So give you an idea, these panes coming down here, they go uh, either go round and directly in, or they sit in the uh, holding stacks. Airlines don't like holding stacks um, because it uses fuel and time. They'd rather come straight in. Um, the lowest run of, an, of a holding stack is 7,000 feet. Um, and you can see the spaghetti on, on the screen from these. This is an arrival swathe, but this is not the concentration we see on departures as I showed you previously. That is coming. Um, Gatwick wants um, uh, concentrated arrivals, as does air traffic control, as does the government, because this is all part of the modernization of airspace. <clears throat> um, if planes come in um, closer, so if they join at say eight nautical miles, um, they often drop their wheels and flaps and lift their noses to take speed off. That increases noise um, three to five decibels. Um, it's, it's not something that can be enforced by Gatwick Airport for them not to do it, but it's in research it's proven that it does increase. And when you bear in mind that Gatwick continually goes on about NEOs being three to five decibels quieter, um, you can see how frustrating it is that if they drop their wheels by coming in with too much speed on, they actually increase it by three to five decibels. Something else that's um, a, a noise abatement procedure, so an NAP um, is something called CDO. Um, it's continuous descent operations. So that means that they come in, they start their descent into Gatwick at 7,000 feet. And the idea is that they stay higher for longer so that they're quieter. The problem is there is no um, rules to um, stagger their reduction in height. So a pilot will often drop quite quickly to glide in. And when they turn, vectoring is noisy. So the closer they are to the runway, so say, here at the moment, you, you, you will have planes at sort of 1500 feet. Out here, planes should be above 4,000 feet. There's no reason why they should be lower. Um, and when they are turning, they create more noise. So there's still a lot of work to be done on arrivals to make them quieter. Um, give you an idea, this is Crowborough here, Arding Lie there, Manning's Heath, uh, Slingfold, all folk cross over here, we've got Dorman's Land, Tumbridge Wells, um, under this stack is Heathfield, Burgess Hill under this stack here, uh, Lindfield. Um, so that just gives you some sort of ideas um, where, where things are. So if I move on, this is something called a noise shadow, um, but the Civil Aviation Authority, the CAA, call it a noise cone, and they did research on this. Um, with concentrated routes, what we found is that you believe you're under a flight path, but when you actually look at, say, flight radar or the Gatwick version, the flight path's not near you and you don't quite understand, but the plane looks like it's over the top of you and you feel the full impact of it. And what's been shown is that um, three to four or five decibels, either side of that concentrated route, there is a noise shadow. So you believe that aircraft is above you and you feel you're getting the full impact of it. 
Now, the higher the plane, the bigger the cone. So although this is recognized, um, it's not something that, that has to be taken into account through airspace changes or at Gatwick Airport, which is, again, very frustrating um, because it's obviously recognized. So that's, that's why you're impacted. So this is giving you an idea of, of a typical day at Gatwick Airport. Um, the blue are departures and the reds are arrivals. Um, and you, you can see the difference. And here it illustrates again, runway 08, runway 26. So arrivals to the east, which are called westerlies, is um, 26L. Uh, departures to the west is uh, 26L. So it is confusing, but it's subject to whether it's departures or arrivals, which way they're going. And as you can see here, route four, this is where they're having problems. Um, they can't keep the planes on one concentrated route, but residents want dispersal. But these residents here are outside the noise preferential route. So they're, they're not happy. I'll give you, this is ride gate up here. Um, this is route three here, departure route. Um, this is route one going down here. Um, this is seven and eight. And you can see there's some vectoring going on here. Um, this is route five here. Um, and obviously you've got rifles. Right, turning to the future, right, the government has signed up to uh, the modernization of airspace. So FAS is Future Airspace Strategy Implementation South. And there is one taking place in the north of the country as well. Now this involves all the London airports. Um, and it's all part of the single European sky. And the idea is that we don't have to have human intervention. We can have um, computerized control of our airspace because these new planes have the technology to be controlled by satellite. So that's what they want to do. They don't want to have um, human intervention because it costs time, it costs money, uh, Etc. Etc. It can be more efficient with um, with um, uh, with with computerized. So, if I just read this to you, the UK airspace is complex. With its design dating back to the 1950s for aircraft, the need to modernize need to modernize has been recognised by the UK government, who tasked the CAA, the Civil Aviation Authority, to coordinate how it happens. The CAA airspace modernization strategy sets out the initiatives that UK industry will deliver to achieve the government policies. NATS, air traffic control and air traffic design, has a central role to play, as does the government, airports, airlines and many others who use our airspace. So it goes on to say modernization of airspace, which means both through design and new tools and technologies will make air traffic more efficient, help reduce the impact air traffic has on local communities and the environment and support future growth. Now Cagney has yet to see any evidence of any noise reduction with FASIS. Only greater number of planes in the skies flying over new areas to allow for efficiency of airspace to benefit aviation growth. Any CO2 saving is lost with more planes because they're still flying on fossil fuel and other greenhouse gases not yet accounted for by aviation. So that's the, that's the contours you see, the soot and the vapors you see. So I'm, I'm hoping you've read what was on the screen there, but that's how we sit. And in a, if a, an airport refuses to go through the process, the government can enforce them to, um, to modernize their airspace and to take part. So for airspace above 7,000 feet, NATS has already designed that. Um, and this is going through a CAP 1616. Gatwick are already at stage two. They have done the design principles by engaging with a very narrow select audience. And so we're coming towards the end of stage two. The public will not be consulted until 2024. Now, 
these are Cagney's party to um, the whole process with Gatwick. But these give you an idea. Now they have produced these maps from the design principles and they've done them on black. So you, you can very rarely, hardly see places. I'm sure it's done on purpose, but anyway. So these are departure routes. Here's Gatwick Airport. This is to the west. Now, these are potential routes. They are not fixed in stone. They are not what's going to go forward. This is just a comprehensive list of options. So please don't be very concerned, but be aware. So here you can vaguely see something that resembles Route 4. Here you can vaguely see Wizard, although it's turning back across Colgate here, it's not overflown. Here you can sort of see route one. And here, I guess that might be seven or eight that join. But this is the Adnid route that was put in in 2014 as a trial that caused so much anger. Some of these are considered to be respite routes. Some of these um, are considered to be the new concentrated flight paths. Here is a route that, that we've never seen before. Um, so that, that's the West for departures. Here we have concentrated routes on arrival. So you remember the swathe where we had this reddish color. These are concentrated arrivals routes. So basically what they want to happen is that when a plane leaves Paris, it knows exactly that it will be joining the final approach, say at 10 nautical miles. So at this star here. What they've done is they're also looking to bring arrivals in at five to six nautical miles. Remember during the day, I said it was eight nautical miles. Well, these would be flying over people with arrivals at very, very low heights. So 1,000 to 1,500 who've never been overflown before by arrivals. They've always had the ILS somewhere close by, but they've never been overflown by arrivals. So these are concentrated routes of arrivals. And the quieter Gatwick is, the more they will focus in on routes closer to the airport. The, the busier Gatwick is, the more staggered they have to be across the final approach. Here we see a arrival coming in from the north directly to the final approach, which we haven't seen before. And here's another one. So again, this is, this is all, you know, design principles being put into play. It's not reality yet, but you must be aware of this. And the other thing is at night, um, currently um, since um, oh, nine, uh, 1980s, there was a noise abatement procedure, an NAP put in place that arrivals should not join at less than 10 nautical miles at night because it recognized that um, residents close to the runway um, were impacted a lot by uh, multiple departure routes and multiple arrival routes, even though it was the final approach. And so um, at the moment, departures cannot, uh, sorry, arrivals cannot join at night at less than 10 nautical miles. Gatwick are also seeking to bring in arrivals at night at five to six nautical miles. This is a work in progress, but it's something you should be aware of. Going to the east, uh, these are arrivals. Again, Gatwick looking to come in at five to six nautical miles with arrivals, flying over places not flown over before with arrivals. Um, and these are concentrated routes. And as you see, here we have um, northern arrivals coming in to the final approach. So this is, this is concentrated on arrivals. So T, TW, Tommy Wells and Crowbar down here, that give you some, some ideas of what is East Grinstead here. Um, and, and obviously Seven Oaks up here. Seven Oaks would have never, not really seen arrivals. And then here we have departures. So here's Gatwick. So these are easterly departures. That's vaguely route three. Um, that's vaguely route five. I guess you could say that's vaguely route two going down towards Lewis. But all of these are either being sort of put forward as respite routes or new concentrated departure routes. And there's a, another thing that they want to do on departures, which is called continuous climb operations. And continuous climb operations mean planes can fly um, high. They don't have to go up, level out, 
then climb again. They want planes to just fly high. And the idea of modernization of airspace is that Heathrow lifts its air traffic and so Gatwick can, can climb. Um, it could be good, it could be bad. Um, we're still out on that one, don't know. Okay, so um, this is Gatwick Airport. And um, uh, some of you might know that um, in the autumn, Gatwick conducted um, a consultation, a public consultation on their plans to rebuild the emergency runway as a second runway. This is the emergency runway here. This is the main runway here. They're going through a planning process called a development consent order. You may remember 2015 Gatwick um, lost out to Heathrow with a third runway. Um, then it was a second runway for Gatwick. Um, now it's a third runway for Gatwick. Um, that hasn't gone away. It's still in their master plan, um, but they're not actively working on it at the moment. What they're currently working on is rebuilding the emergency runway as a second runway. Um, so we have a consultation out currently, um, which says it's about highways, but actually it's, it's, it's about a lot more than highways. So I would urge you to participate in that um, because the Gatwick is looking to go to the government planning body. So that's um, PINs um, because it's a national infrastructure project because Gatwick seeks to go over the 10,000 extra passengers a year. So going from, uh, say, 46 million passengers a year to um, 73 million, um, going from 285,000 to um, just under 400,000. Um, so huge increase. And if I just point out some things here, so that's the emergency runway. This is the Juliet taxiway. Um, this emergency runway has to be re rebuilt um, 12 metres north. So it brings obviously the aircraft closer to the northern side of, of, of the airport. Um, the reason they've got to do that is for them to be able to use both runways on a regular basis, which they can't do currently. They have to have a separation because at the moment it would be unsafe to use the two runways on a regular basis side by side. So they don't exist as a two runway airport currently. When this runway, the main runway is closed for maintenance, they use the emergency runway. Um, what Gatwick also would have to do is put lots and lots more taxiways. There's huge construction, removal of various buildings to enable them to use it. And also they have to have a traffic light system because they have to cross the emergency runway to get to the terminals. So a very complex um, system. With the main runway and the emergency runway operating um, as a two runway airport, Gatwick would not necessarily be looking to fly north. So route four from this, they would be looking to route one, seven and eight from both these. Arrivals will only come back on the main runway. And when they fly, to the east from the emergency runway, they won't be going necessarily to route three to north, they will be flying directly out on route five. Um, so that's something that, that you should be aware of. It's huge construction. Um, and if you do look at the current consultation, you'll see that the, the highways construction is, is all about um, benefiting Gatwick. And, and also they, they detail that there's gonna be a huge freight increase. Currently Gatwick has very little freight. So um, that will be lots of new lorries on the roads, etc. cetera. Um, and part of the um, DCO, the development consent order is something that, that they gave details of in the autumn consultation. So if you didn't see the autumn consultation, here they are. The, something called noise envelopes. It was something that Heathrow looked to do um, and progress. And um, Gatwick had these details in their consultation in the autumn, but the government body, planning body, PINs, asked them to do more work on these. So Cagney currently sits on the noise envelope working group. And um, today it's wholly unsatisfactory. As I said to you, noise contours do move because of subject to whether it's departures or arrivals. 
So based on the 2019 um, figures, um, this would be the eight hour night noise counter. And that will be um, 45 decibels. And in the daytime, this would be the 51 decibels. So that would be the only area that these air noise envelopes would be legally binding. So they would only have to stay within these noise envelopes to say legally, we will not go above X noise. Now in this report, it also says that Gatwick um, will um, be able to review these subject to um, airspace change. The problem is that whilst we're discussing these noise envelopes, Gatwick is also, as I've just mentioned to you, progressing modernization of airspace. In the current consultation, it says there will be no new flight paths off a two runway airport. But you have just seen what Gatwick is progressing with the modernization of airspace. Let me just flick back. Lots of concentrated routes that have not been there before. This is already progressing. And yet Gatwick says that there will be no new flight paths of the two runway airport. Cagney finds that very disingenuous to people and very misleading. And we do not believe these noise envelopes will be flexible enough to capture the noise increase. And Gatwick in their own documents say the noise will be louder with two runways. And they are totally reliant upon aviation investing in quieter planes. And we see no evidence of, of, of that. So um, that's it. Um, that's the end of, of, of my presentation. Um, I could go on all day. <laughs> There's so much, um, so much to talk about. This is us. Um, please do, do join us. Now I'm going to stop recording and I can see I've got nine things in the chat. Um, and so we're going to go to question and answers. So let me stop sharing now. Let me. Um, oh, God, I'm there.